Here is how I retouch my image from start to finish using Capture One and Photoshop. I'm going to share with you guys everything I do to retouch my images. Now, I use Capture One to process my profile before taking it to Photoshop for retouching. This is my Capture One interface. So, you can see this image is looking a bit underexposed. So, I come to my adjustment layer and just cut my exposure and increase the exposure a little bit like so. And my exposure one is on. So, if I take it all the way up, you can see the exposure is peaking. So, this is the exposure one. Those part that I read means the image is overexposed. So I'm going to take the exposure down a little bit like so. So that this works for me. The next I'm going to do, I'm just going to open up the shadows by coming to the high dynamic range and just come to the shadow slider and just move it up like this to open up the shadows as you can see. Now I'm going to take down the highlights a little bit. So I'm going to come down to my levels and just move the bright part inside a little bit like this. So that this works for me. Now this is everything I'm going to do inside of Capture One. So this is the before and the after the before and the after now i'm just going to open this image inside of photoshop so i'm going to come to this place and just right click and click on edit with and click on adobe photoshop and i'll be using t5 and i'll be using system beats and my um option is on uncompressed my sc profile is on adobe rgb so i'm going to click on edit variant and this image will automatically open inside of photoshop for us all right now once this image open inside of photoshop the first thing i'm going to do i'm going to duplicate my background layer by pressing on ctrl j and I'm just going to zoom in and remove the blemishes from this image. To remove the blemishes, I have a plugin called the Retouch on Me, which I used to remove my blemishes. So I'm just going to come to my filter, come to Retouch on Me, and click on Retouch on Me Heal right here. And what this is going to do for me, it will help me automatically remove my blemishes without me doing it manually. And the result is really, really amazing. So it's just going to load now, so you can see. So if I just zoom in, you can see it has automatically removed the blemishes for us. So you can see. This is the before and the after. The before and the after. The result is really, really amazing. So make sure your make mask is checked. And I'm going to click on apply right here. And just going to apply for me now. This is the before and the after. So after removing the blemishes, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do my micro dodge and bond. So I'm going to create the stamp visible here by pressing on Ctrl Shift Alternate E. And I'm also going to be using the retouch on me to do that. So I'll come back to my filter, click on retouch on me, and click on dodge and bond right here. Now this will automatically do my micro dodge and bond for me. So basically, you can use this retouch on me to retouch your image in just one click and saves you a lot of time. And I currently will say right now, so if you use the link shown below right now, you are going to get 30% off any purchase you make. So it's just going to load right now and do the micro dodge and bond for us. So I'm just going to zoom in so you can see the before and after. So this is the before and the after. The before and the after. And you can choose to actually make the blend even more to make it more intense as you can see so i'm going to take it up a little bit like uh, 182 so this is the before and this is the after and you're going to add a little warmth to it about 15 so this is the before and this is the after now i'm going to open it in a soft light layer and click on apply so right now you can see where is dodge are bone for us so you can see those parts that are looking bright are the part that it dodge and the part looking dark are the part that it burn so you can see the before and the after so from here just change the blend mode from normal to soft lights to bring back the original image so i'm going to group both the heel and the dodge and burn so you can see the before and after you can see how good this image is looking already this is the before and this is the after so if you want to touch on me check the link in the description below so next thing i'm going to do i'm just going to use focus separation to remove these blemishes that they touch on me fix and just smoothing out the image a little bit like i said earlier this is how i actually touch all my images so I'm going to come back to my action. And by the way, if you want my action, I'm also giving that for free. Check this one below as well. So because this image is 16 bits, I'm going to click on fresh separation 16 bits. And I'm just going to use 12 for this image and click on OK. And for the blur radius, if you want your image to be smooth, use a small blur radius. And if you want to retain texture of your image, use a high blur radius. So for this image, I use a blur radius of 12 because I still want to retain textures on the image. Now I'm just going to zoom in. Now to remove the blemishes, just pick your close stamp tool. So this is my close stamp tool right here. I'm going to select it and just click on this high frequency copy layer right here. Let me just close this um, action. Then zoom in, increase my brush size by using the square bracket key. Press alternate to sample from the close by area and just paint it over any blemishes you want to remove. Just like that to remove it. So alternate to sample and just paint over any blemishes you want to remove. Just like that. Alright, now that I've removed the blemishes, next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to use my mixer brush tool to smooth it out the image. So, this is before the blemishes removed. You can see these blemishes right there, no longer there. And this is the after. Alright, now next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to use my mixer brush tool to smooth out the color. 
So make sure this is your brush shade layer is selected if you're using this my action and just pick your mixer brush tool and just turn off this half requested texture layer. Click on this icon to turn it off. So we have only the colors on the image. For your mixer brush settings, make sure your clean brush after each stroke is selected. My weight is on 30, my load is on 20, mix is on 90, my flow is on 30, and sample layer is selected because we are working on this empty layer right here. So I'm just going to increase my mixer brush size and just brush on the image. And also make sure you're using a soft hand brush. It's very, very important. Make sure you're using a soft hand brush. So I'm just going to brush on the highlight separately like so and the shadow separately. So this is how I retouch this image. Just follow it step by step process. This is how I retouch all my images. All right. So I'm going to paint on the highlight separately. Remember, don't brush shadows into highlights and don't brush highlights into shadows. And because we've done the micro dodge and burn already with the retouch on me, I, just, I don't have to spend much time doing this. I just have to just blend everything a little bit just to make everything look smooth. So let me quickly show you the before and after of what we've done so you can see. All right, so this is for the mixer brush. You can see this image is looking good. We still have the textures and the image is looking smooth. So this is the before and the after. The before and the after. And not just for the face, I'm still going to do the same thing for the body. So I'm going to turn off this high frequency texture layer again and just brush on this part right here. Just to smoothen it, just to smoothen it out like so. All right, so I feel it's looking good right now. So let me quickly show you before and after. So this is before focus separation and after focus separation, before and after. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to do my global dodge and burn. So do my global dodge and burn, I'll come back to my action again and just click on Tillens dodge and burn right here. So for global dodge and burn, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to be making the bright part of the image more brighter and the dark part of the image more darker just to add depth to the image. So I'll open this tab right here and I'm just going to turn off all the layers which I did earlier. I'm just going to turn them off so I can see the original image. Now once my dodge is selected, I'll pick my normal brush tool. Once I pick my normal brush tool, I'll change my passive to 100. I'll change my flow to about 2% and click on OK. Now I'm just going to zoom in and just brush on the highlights part of the image with a white brush because the layer mask is on black. So just paint on it with a white brush. I'm going to brush on the highlight like this just to make it a little bit, a little bit more brighter and also brush on this cheek right here. So anywhere there's highlight on the image, that's where I'm going to be brushing this on just like that. Also, I'll do the same thing for the body. So I'm going to brush on this part right here. This highlight right here as well. The highlight right here. Okay. So please pay close attention. All right. So this is the before and the after. You can see that shine. Now I'll come to the bone. Now for the bone, I want to paint on the shadow area. So I'm going to zoom in and just burn this part right here, which is the shadow area. Burn this part right here. Burn this part right here. Also, burn this part right here. So this is a shadow area. I'm just going to burn them just like that, just to add that depth to the image. Okay? Now, the before and the after. So as I'm done with that, I'm just going to turn on this my retouching layers again just to bring back the original image. Wow, you can see this image is looking really, really, really good right now. So let me just show you before Global Dodge Bond and after Global Dodge Bond. So this is the before and the after. The before and the after. You can see we've added that depth to this image. Now next I'm going to do, I'm just going to work on the eyes. So let's make the eyes white. So I'll come back to the actions again and just click on eyes and teeth whitening right here. Once I click on that, I'm just going to zoom in. And just use my normal brush tool with a white brush opacity set to 100 flow sets to 100 and just paint on the white part of the eyes just like this and if you make a mistake you can just pick your eraser tool and erase it just like that and just continue brushing with your normal brush tool all right okay so this is the before and this is after and that i'm going to do with this layer mask selected i'm going to come to windows and click on properties right here properties right here and just feather it just to make the edges smooth like that all right so the before and the after and if you feel it's too much you can just reduce the opacity and still on the eyes another thing i'm going to do i'm going to come to my adjustment layer click on curves adjustment layer and just move it towards the uh, bright part like this and just invert it by pressing on ctrl i once i invert it i'm going to pick my normal brush tool again with a white brush I'm just going to paint on the catch lights just to make it even more brighter like so all right 
and also i'm going to create another curves adjustment layer curves adjustment layer take it up a little bit like this all right invert it again by pressing on ctrl i and this time i'm going to paint on this part right here those brown parts of the eyes like this just to make everything blend all right now i'm going to group the eyes let's see what we did for the eyes so you can see the before and after so this is the before or for the eyes and the after for the eyes the before and the after all right now that i'm going to do i'm going to create a stamp visible layer and just make the eyes pop even more so i'm going to create a stamp visible layer by pressing on ctrl shift alternate e i'll come back to my actions again and scroll all the way down and click on this unsharpen eyes and lips mask just to make the eyes pop all right so once i click on it, it's going to create a layer for me so pick my normal brush tool again and this time i'm just going to paint white on the eyes just like this just to make it sharp as you can see do the same thing for this other eyes and also do the same thing for the lips as you can see right here okay now this is the before and the after all right so to color grade this image i'm going to press a ctrl shift alternate e create a stamp visible layer come back to my filter i come to camera raw filter right here and once i open the image out of camera raw i'm going to scroll all the way down i come to calibration open the calibration tab come to the blue primary and just move the blue primary saturation up a little bit like this so like this works for me so next thing i'm going to do i'm going to come to my color mixer i come to the hue so you know schedule consists of mostly oranges and reds and yellows so for the oranges i'm just going to take the hue down a little bit like this to minus five all right now i come to the yellows take the yellows down a bit like this all right so i come to the saturation for the saturation i'll take the saturation of the oranges down a little bit as well also take the saturation of the of the yellows down a little bit and saturation of the reds down a little bit like this all right so this is the before and the after now i'm just going to come to this masking place right here i just want to make the i just want to make the background a little bit more darker so i'm going to click on background right here and it's going to automatically select the background for us so once the background is selected i'm just going to come to exposure and just take down the exposure of the background a little bit like so all right then i'm going to select the subject once i select the subject i'm going to add a little bit of exposure to the subject like this and just reduce the highlights a little bit for the subject okay so that this works for me so these are before and are after and i'm going to click on okay now the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to add contrast to this image so let me try this switch tune right here let's see so i'm going to click on this switch tune inside my action let's see the effect so i think i like the effect it's looking good but i feel it's too much so i'm just going to reduce the opacity even more to about let's use 10 percent 10 percent works on me so this is the before and the after the before and the after and i'm just going to sharpen this image just a little bit so i'm going to come to sharpen and just click on sharpen right here and just reduce the opacity a little bit like so and let me just group everything i did for this image so you can see the fun after before i show you how to export or save your image all right this is the before we started from and the after you can see how good this image is looking right now so for save this image let's just crop it to fit for instagram so i'm going to create a stamp stable layer by pressing on ctrl shift alternate e just pick my crop tool change this background fill from background to content hour fill change your ratio to four by five and this is why I changed to create our face because I want to expand it like this to fit for Instagram. So I want Photoshop to automatically fill those edges for me. Then I change it to content aware. So for my hair works for me like this. And I'm going to click on OK. And Photoshop will automatically crop and fill those sides for me 4x5 to fit for Instagram. Then after it has finished copying, I'm going to show you how I actually save my image for Instagram without losing any quality. So after copy your image to save your image, click on File, click on Exports. Click for save for web legacy and change this place right here to jpeg as you can see then your quality should be 70 to 80 minus on 80 and optimize is selected and i think that's pretty much it all you have to do is just click on save and just save the image in any folder you want and you are good to go so this is my step-by-step -step process on how i actually retouch all my images so there's no gatekeeping this is how i retouch my image and if you want to watch more retouching tutorial Check out this playlist right here. I'll see you guys in my next one. Stay quickly.